G'day Grievers. I've gone live a little bit earlier than planned because I want to try something different today. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the shitty kitty kitchen. Let me just do some I try something different. Muting. Normally I look at my laptop for chat, but um, I'm actually going to try reading chat on my phone and reading the recipe on my laptop. That's the plan I've got. But I thought we could just hang out and have a bit of a chat. The problem is, it's even though I'm live, it's not showing on my phone. How's everyone doing? This is riveting. Trying to get some technology. Okay. Hi, Ruth. Trying to get some technology. All right. Let's okay. turn my phone down and put my phone there, and then I can look down and read chat rather than looking on over there. Riveting. I know. Yeah, man. Iva, we're talking balls tonight. Little balls. Lots of little balls. <laughs> So um, how's everyone doing on this dark and cold winter's eve? What's news? Biscuits full of food and passed out, as she should be. I am going to put the camera down and you can watch me. I find it weird. It's sort of like you see me but without my head. But, you know, the peeps speak. They said they wanted to see what I'm actually doing while I'm cooking, even though this is really just a chat and hang out while I cook. <laughs> you definitely saw a notification with balls. Now, I am on Facebook as well. Um, that's the only issue I will need to say today, but I'll just do a generic, hi, everyone, in Facebook land. I'm going to put the link to this live into chat on Facebook. And as always, you are more than welcome to click that link and come on over. And if you don't have a YouTube channel but you have got a Gmail account, you can. they ask you to create a channel but you're not obligated to do anything on your channel. But if you join us over in um, YouTube land, all the chat comes up on one screen. But I will try and jump backwards and forwards. Oh, Biscuit's rolling around. She's got no idea she's off to the VET tomorrow. There's going to be tears. So I might get on with the balls in a minute. Um, we're doing Swedish meatballs, although it's off the Diet Doctor website. Is It is accessible to the public. It's one of their free recipes. Um, according to them, they are a Swedish website. Apparently there's nothing Swedish about these meatballs at all. So we'll call them un-Swedish meatballs. We're going to make the meatballs. They're going to get baked in the oven. So I'll whack the oven on because they... Um, they're going to bake. So the oven's going on to 190 degrees Celsius. If you're Fahrenheit, you'll need to convert it. I think it works out too. Hey, Lady Pegasus, good to see you, Groover. I'll put the recipe up here, 375 Fahrenheit. Oh, man, looks like I'm buffering. I'm having problems with my um, phone at the moment. I might have to switch over to my nbn see how we go um so we're going to make the, the meatballs they're going to be in a gravy i am tweaking the gravy a little bit um i've got some mushrooms i need to use up so we're going to chuck them in the gravy and then we're going to do like a cauliflower mash um normally if i made these i'd probably do green beans or broccoli or something but because i'm using up the mushrooms and there's a cauliflower there's no greenery but there's veggies are happening <laughs> I wish I could show you Biscuit. She lies on her back. She's hilarious. And then she does all these sort of yoga. Well, she looks a little bit ninja at the moment. But I might flick the screen down. Now I've got to go back to Stream Yards. It's all, all the technology. Just bear with me for a second. There we go. Now, this isn't red wine, everyone. This is cranberry juice. Just. So, you know. 
so funny on Streamyards that the emojis, all the little, yeah. What is why is that a um, why is that a COVID nineteen? Yeah, my phone's buffering again. Hang on. I'm only watching on my phone, so let's see if connecting to my home network fixes that. Why do they have like a little Hello Kitty in a box in the COVID-19 emojis? I don't get it at all. Right, so first we're going to make the bowls. Now I'm making a, I'm making for four servings, but you can, the beauty with Diet Doctor is even if you're using the free recipes is you can adjust it. If you want to make meatballs for 24, you can do it. They say to put five, uh, 450 grams of half beef, half pork. I don't eat pork, so I'm just going all beef mince. Um, if you dig pork, hang on, there's a little bit left on the bowl. If you dig pork, go for it. I did wash my hands before I went live, but I'll wash them again just so nobody goes, oh, my God. She didn't wash her hands. But, yeah, what's news, people? What's going on? That might be a bit low. Hang on. Ah, uh, now it's really low. The person that wanted me to show the bench hasn't come back since they told me they wanted to see the bench, so... I don't know. Pork does add a tasty. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing? And hello over on YouTube. Um, cocktail hour. I will keep you company, gorgeous. What, what's cocktail are you having? Having and having? One egg. See, now normally I look at um, my laptop for chat and I'm trying looking at my phone, but now I've gone back on just, this is just getting ridiculous. Um, one egg. Now they do say dried parsley. I do not have such a thing in my kitchen, so I'm actually going to use dried basil. Um, but there is a reason that they recommend dry things with meatballs because if you start adding like fresh herbs and so on, when they're baking in the oven, it adds liquid, whereas if you use dried stuff, it soaks up all the fat as it's coming out and puts it back into the meatballs. According to them, we'll see. A Cosmo, well, it sounds bloody delicious. There's going to be garlic, Ivor, don't you worry about that. But it's going to be, um, again, dried. I, I was watching a video earlier on them making these to work out why it's all dry stuff. And, yeah, it's something to do with the um, less water and then the, when the fat's going out of the meatballs while they're they're cooking, it then um, soaks back up into the meatball. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this tripod is the worst. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Biscuit just jumped about 20 feet in the air. Far out. She's left. She's pissed off. And rightly so. Are we back in business? <laughs> Crikey. Hang on. God, it all... I seriously shouldn't have listened to the person who said they wanted to watch the bench. It used to be so... <laughs> it is. Hi, Neil. How you doing, gorgeous? Um... It seriously is cranberry juice. I'm thinking I should have put something in it now. Right, where were we? Oh, yeah. Onion. So the recipe I'm finding looking at my phones is shit. I should just stay on StreamYards. Hang on, I'm going to do a swap. I'm going to put the menu up on or the recipe up on my screen on my phone. Um, a tablespoon of dried minced onion, which is presumably what this is. I bought it especially. A tablespoon of that. In she goes. But yeah, I, I kind of preferred it when I had the camera. I do need vodka in it. I need a lot of vodka in it. Sounded like I kicked the bucket. Well, it, my camera and the tripod, the camera and the tripod are actually on top of a metallic vase. It is quite like a bucket. 
uh, but a tall one. So, yeah. And then you get me headless. This headless thing I don't really like either. So, yeah. Like I said, the person who wanted to see the bench hasn't come back since they asked for the bench. I prefer to open before when I'd just be chatting and cooking in the background. <laughs> Paranormal activity balls. These balls are crazy. Right, half a teaspoon of salt. Varishy blows. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, which I also bought. I never used garlic or onion powder, I don't think, or probably once in my life before I went on to keto, and they use it a lot. And I actually really like it. It gives good flavours. It's delicious. And we're also, now if you are into pork, they also suggest adding um, 60 mils of ground pork rinds, which I suppose will, um, you're used to seeing my beautiful face. Well, bench back, get back in here. Yeah, I, I can't do my face now because you won't see a thing. I'll, for This is the last time I think I'll do this. I don't, look, I don't know, but I'm actually going to get the help of someone to help me film and hold the camera, um, which will be interesting. But, um, yeah, that's the plan. Go back to how you had the camera before and stuff the gear to has and bring back. Exactly, Ruth, exactly. Now we're also going to add some Parmesan cheese. I will go back to how I used to do it, but I can't do it tonight because I have to completely reset everything. No, I want dinner. You'll just have this is one more headless Tory show. Um, and yeah, we need to add some Parmesan cheese. Twenty grams. Well, the rule of thumb is thirty grams is about the size of a matchbox, so we're going for like that sort of size which is kind of like a matchbox but skinnier. And this is one of my favourite gadgets in my kitchen. It was my mum's. If anyone's got one of these, they are awesome. They great things in little wiggles. Here you go. See, everyone, look at that. See, I used to hold the bowl up to the camera. I think um, I should change my channel name again. I am actually changing it again, to, but for the last time, but I should change it temporarily to the Headless Chef or Cook. Stuff the Git who hasn't been back. I love it. Stuff the Git. Well, look at it this way, guys. This is history in the making. It's the last time I'm doing this. I mean, I hold things up to the camera, and I think at the end of the day, if I say I'm chopping an onion, people can visualise what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing, though. 20 grams of parmy goes a long way. See, everybody, look at that. Out of this world. But, yeah, if you do eat pork, they say to add get some pork rinds and grind them up. I guess they'd add a little bit of um, crunch. So now we're going to make some scrotums, some testicles, I mean, some balls. So I make my meatballs with my hands. I did wash my hands, don't freak out. And at the end of the day, I'm the only one eating these fuckers. So, so calm the fuck down. Um, if you're going to go headless, you might as well be topless. I'm a long way off monetizing. I need to get to 1,000 subs. And that's not going to happen because people don't really care about cooking channels and channels where people just do everyday stuff. They want drama. But I am doing a topic, a drama topic on the weekend, not to attract subscribers, just to get some shit off my chest. So Parmesan does go with everything in terms of food. So I'm just going to go for this sort of size meatball. 
they say one and a half inch, but every guy I've ever been with has had a reasonably decent sized penis. So I don't know what one and a half inches looks like. Get your gear off subs galore. Well, I did have someone get their gear off on my channel and I didn't get me any subs. So there goes that theory out the window. I forgot to mention that beautiful egg that I used. My sister dropped a dozen eggs down to me the other day. They've got a friend who's got chooks that are laying like five eggs a day per chook. No, that's not right. They're getting five eggs a day. So they've just got shitloads of eggs. Um, and she dropped a beautiful dozen organic eggs down. And it's really cute. The guy that has the chooks has written the name of the chook that laid it and the date that they laid it. Um, I can eat bacon and ham but can't stomach the take of it. So, yeah, I can eat bacon and ham too, uh, Lady Pegasus. I can eat it if it's cured, but uncured pork, there's a bacteria that makes me really sick. So I'm kind of happy because at the end of the day I didn't, I mean, I liked, my mum used to do nice sort of pork chops and stuff um, when we were kids and I liked them. But, yeah, as I got older, I just I can't eat any uncured. And ham I can live without, I don't care. But bacon, giddy up. Hey, Jules, how you doing? I am here. You are here. I jump on and off watching things towards, I don't think it was me who asked for the bench. I asked for a recipe ingredient. Yeah, they're in the, the recipes. The links are always in the description for my video on YouTube, Jules. I didn't think I blamed you for the bench thing, but I'm glad you cleared that up. Hey, Aussie Outlaw, can I agree with that? Deb, I do make nice balls. Thank you. I know how to handle a ball. So we're getting about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Lucky number. 13 balls. I hope everyone's okay over on Facebook. I've got really grubby hands because I'm playing with balls, so I can't see if anything's happening over there. I thought you were blaming me. I didn't mention any names. I can't remember who said it, to be honest. Um, but, no, I weren't blaming you, Jules, by the beach. But nice to have you here. And, yeah, if you want the recipe, um, I always put them in the description when I set the um the video you know the live up so come over to youtube look in the description in fact the link is in facebook land too so on either platform thou can see it the bench batch said it exactly the bench oh that's what you were talking before about the bench batch right gotcha there you go everybody look at that a charming platter of testicles the oven's already at 190 so in they go and they're gonna roast in the oven novel huh um and that was just a baking tray with some paper on it when i prepared earlier they're telling me to set them a proper approximately half an inch apart i don't know what they were Bake for 15 to 20 minutes or until they're browned and cooked thoroughly. Hey, Google, can you set an alarm for 15 minutes? Hey, Google. Good, wake up. <laughs> can you set an alarm for 15 minutes? Please. 5.59 p.m. set. Hey, Google, can you turn your volume up to five? Thank you. I always feel like I have to be polite to her, but she really doesn't give a flying fuck. So the balls are in. You like your balls have squished a bit more. I like them round. You like them more risole either. More of a risole is a bit flatter, isn't it? So now let's get on with the gravy. Now, like I said, I have some mushrooms. I'm only using a smallish frying pan, and this isn't really my frying pan of choice, but it was in my camper van, and I, all the ones I've got are big. Um, actually, maybe. 
I might switch that one out. Hang on. I might just do it in this fucker. Let's just do them in this fucker. <laughs> but yeah, I've got some mushies that I need to use up, so I'm going to put them in instead. Uh, Google. No, Google wasn't ignoring me. She wasn't awake. She was just having a little nap. Um, hope the balls don't break open. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. It might be busted balls. But at the end of the day, they're just going to all be in gravy anyway, so, you know. Um, right, the gravy. So I'm first up, I'm just going to do the mushrooms. Need some butter. Just pan fry them first and then take them out and add them later because I don't like just chucking them raw into a gravy. That's like gross. But, yeah, I haven't scheduled my live yet, but for the weekend I want to do a live where we talk about what the fuck is YouTube, <laughs> what's happening on YouTube. It's going to be an open forum. I don't want people to come up and bitch about specific creators that give them the shits because I think they're all as bad as each other now. But it's going to be like a group hug therapy se segment for everyone who's met on the YouTubes and just what's been going on. I think I... Well, hello there, Maddie. How are you doing? Oh, sorry, John. <laughs> Busted balls. Yeah, <laughs> your sense of humour. What did you call them? The bench, the bench batch. Good to hear, have you here, Groover. We've got meatballs baking in the oven, like chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Hey, Cheryl. Oh, Amy's on Facebook. She loves balls too. Excellent. And Cheryl's having a good old giggle at balls as well. Look at balls. It's just the word, isn't it? Um, I'm not a huge Mummy Ramblings blog follower, but um, still don't see the camera since that fell. It's just been wonky. That's a bit better. Um, baking, Yes. I know, Matty, it's crazy because I normally cook mine in a pan, but they are baking. So we're going to see what they're like. And then they're going to end up going in some gravy. We're also going to be making some cauliflower mash, which is essentially a shitload of dairy and cauliflower mixed together, pretending to be mashed potato. Um, but, yeah, interesting. You're freezing at your beach too. Yeah, it's been cold. But isn't it lovely when you go for a walk and your cheeks get all pinched by the cold weather and then you get into your little cosy house and you can have got showers and I love it. I love it. So I'm just melting a bit of butter here. Waiting for this pot to heat up a little bit. The recipe doesn't call for mushrooms. Like I said, I'm just using them up because waste not, want not. But I just want to give these a little a little cook before I um, start making the gravy. But you could add mushrooms if you want to the gravy. You could add whatever you want to the gravy, really. It's up to you. There's no end to the options. Ruth, it's hot and you have continual rain, so you're flooding again. That sucks because you're north of where Matt is, or John. I'll just call you John, even though it feels weird, Matt, but just so nobody's like, who's Matt? Where's he? Um, but, yeah, not Lady Pegasus, um, Mummy Ramblings blog, like, She's not someone that I watch regularly, but the night that she got that awful call about her son, they were opening up these balls and she kept talking about balls and all these other sort of women that are into craft and, you know, sort of squeaky clean, don't swear, and they just kept talking about balls. But you could tell Mummy Ramblings was totally throwing in the double entendres. It was quite 
funny but then it was weird too it's like why are all these women buying these they're sort of like plastic balls that you break open they've got like little miniature packets of flour or boxes of blocks of chocolate or a bit like those shitty plastic coals things but um she a lot of double entendre puns about balls she had going on makes you make the word makes you laugh doesn't it see heaps of rain in london too yeah i hope the floods subside as well that sucks floods are awful they're so well i mean any natural disaster is awful but floods are just that horrible damp smell Ugh. we had some really bad floods here a few years ago and it, they caused so much like massive floods not what we normally get in hobart There were cars floating down the main, one of the main streets of Hobart. Very weird. And then up in the north, we had horrible, horrible floods and a lot of farmers lost a lot of their animals. It was, you know, their stock, it was, just, yeah, bad. So I'm just pan frying some mushrooms in some butter. But, yeah, this weekend I think I'm going to do a live. It'll be a panel. People can come up and just talk about what we've all experienced on YouTube since we discovered the world of YouTube lives. And, um, yeah, I don't really want it to be a bitch session. It's going to be a bit more fun. Everyone can kind of offload and we'll all have a group hug at the end. Um, I think it'll be on Saturday Australia time at probably maybe one or two o'clock i don't know yet um i am doing a bit of a play on makeup mobsters series when grief enters your life i'm changing it to when youtube enters your life but i think um be good to have a panel discussion we can all just talk about our observations and if anyone wants to come on panel you don't have to cam up i mean i'll obviously verify you backstage but It'd be good to have some other people chatting because even though I talk about it a little bit on the beach, I sort of feel like I'm doing a monologue and I know I can read chat and everything. Yeah, get your jammies on, Lady Pegasus. Get comfy, Groover. A little bit more butter for the mushies. It's keto. They love butter, so I don't ever feel guilty about using butter when you do keto. They'd be more angry at me using the mushrooms because of the carbs in the mushrooms than they would be about the... I mean, but no, the reason I've got mushrooms is because of a dish I did with those last night that had mushrooms in it. Um, it was a Philly cheesecakes, a cheesecake, Philly cheese casserole. And I thought it sounded like some sort of American dish, but it was, a, it was Philadelphia cheese and chicken and mushrooms in a casserole. It was really yummy. like onion the keto recipes always and we're going to cut up an onion in a minute but they use the smallest amount in fact let's do that while the mushrooms are cooking they use the smallest amount of onions because of the carbs in onions i didn't think onions had carbs but yeah they do and they're saying to use um and i'll get the recipe back on Where's the gravy recipe ingredients? Here we go. 30 grams, like, you know, a matchbox size. I'm just going to go with a quarter, but a bit bummed because I love me some onion. I'm um, using the Spanish onion, red onion. And they say to chop it up finely, and I say, no, thank you. Onions in the gravy, I like it in slices, like, you know, ribbons, slices. Do the slices and then break it all up and have little ribbony bits. Don't do, well, I don't like finely chopped onion in a gravy. Yuck. All right, they're good enough. Just get them out. The high in sugars, that's why they caramelise so well. Well, yeah, I knew about the sugar, Maddie, but I'm surprised about the carbs. They were actually saying carbs when I was watching the little video earlier. The, there were two women making the meatballs and 
one of them said we don't go crazy with onion because of the carbs. And I thought, well, that sucks. I mean, you can literally have a block of butter in one dish, but you can, you can only have throw 30 grams of an onion. Okay. So, yeah, 30 grams of an onion is like a quarter of an onion. Ripped off, I say. But I'm being good. I'll put a little bit more butter in the pan. Slice up the onion. And then, like I said, I just slice it and just break, you know, the little bits off. And cook it like that. The, I don't like finely chopped onion in anything. I mean, look, I do in some things, but not in a gravy. Give the gravy some, you know, substance, some personality. That's it. Oh, no, there's a tiny bit left. When you're only allowed to have 30 grams... Make sure you use every bit you can. I was about to put the skin over in a bowl. I'm like, there's actually some onion under that skin. So there we go. It smells really good in here. Um, Vicky, no mule on your enamel. What? Tori's rocking the turtleneck. Like, Thank you. One slice of onion, so I put in one bag. No mule on your enamel. I don't know what you're what you're talking about. I'm using. I don't know what new measure. Oh, just then with the spoon. Yeah, sorry. I did think about that when I did it. it. I just took out some mushrooms. It's all right. I did think about it when I was actually doing it. My chopsticks are too far down. Otherwise, I would have got them on, on the job. They're too far down in my utensil thing and I don't feel like rummaging for them. But, yeah, no metal. I hear you, Groover. And I normally don't. Brown the onion. We're doing that. Then we're going to add some salt. A pinch of, I think, from memory. Half a teaspoon. That'll do. Some cracked pepper. I love pepper. Do whatever makes you happy. 225 mils of bone broth. Um, this is a beef one, but you can use stock cubes if you haven't got um, bone broth. Oh, that's for the meatballs. I'll get the dairy and we'll check the meatballs. Well, there's liquid pissing all over the place, so I don't know what they were talking about, but they look pretty brown. I'm going to take them out. Oh, you're all warm and comfy. That's awesome. Sorry if I'm missing comments. There's a bit happening at the moment. Thanks, Google. There you go. But yeah, there is a bit of there is a bit of meatball juice. Hey Google, stop. Thank you. By the way, you can also just say stop without having to start with hey, followed by Google. Fuck you, Google. God, picky. <laughs> is it a full moon? So yeah, there's a bit of jizz there. They reckon there wouldn't be jizz, but there's jizz. So or they use dried ingredients thing. But they've they've held their um you know they're bally. So good on them. Next we want some sour cream. A 
they say um, 60 mils and a tablespoon's about 20 mils. So, well, it is 20 mils. So about three tablespoons of sour cream. Hang on, I'll just use my baby whisk. This little bugger, um, whenever I open a new tub of sour cream, I give it a good little whip with my baby whisk so it gets all, you know, it doesn't resemble the container. You know, it gets, it's not that the liquid's separated, but it's just nicer when you give it a good stir. Oh, shit, I just broke my mini whisk. I've got about 20 of them, so that's all right. I find the rubbery ones actually last longer than the metal ones. But, yeah, about three tablespoons of sour cream. Not been cooking long enough. It's all a bit of a guesstimate for me, but if you want to measure it out, three tablespoons of that. And I think we've got to put some Philadelphia cream cheese in our gravy as well because, yeah, that's how they roll. There's cheese and cream in, butter in, absolutely everything. So a tablespoon of Philly. And then... You want to be mixing all of that up together so that it um, blends in together and I think we'll get it up to a bit of a simmer. Simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Are you kidding me? I'll crank the heat up again a bit. Um, did I make my own boat? No, that's not. I normally use a stock that I make myself and freeze, but I've only got chicken stock. So that's actually a... Um, it's a, you know, it's an actual bone broth, a liquid in a sachet in the refrigerated deli section. Um, they're not cheap, though, but I use them. I have the, sounds gross, but sometimes I have bone broth for breakfast. So I might leave them out. I think I made that for the cauliflower mix as well. So I'm just getting all of this melting together. Yeah, so I had a bone broth. Um, I bought the bone broth yesterday and I had a cup of it for breakfast. Well, not breakfast, like mid-morning. But it sort of reminds me of when I lived in Vietnam and we used to have pho for breakfast, you know, the beautiful soups that they make. Google's making you pee with laughter. So are the leaky balls. Yeah, they did look good. You're giving up the six. You you're giving up the six p.m. Southern Cross news. Holy shit, Ivor! I'll take that as a compliment. So we're just going to get this up to a point where it's um simmering, where we're like starting to bubble, and then we'll simmer it for fifteen to twenty minutes. I didn't realize. Oh shit! I've fucked up too. This was not meant. The dairy wasn't meant to go until it's simmered for twenty minutes. <laughs> I don't care. Who cares? I'm putting everything in. It can simmer. If I have to add more dairy at the end, I will. That's the problem with going live, and I don't read the recipes first. I just went straight up to the ingredients and just chucked everything in. But that's okay. That's the beauty of cooking is you just, necessity is the mother of invention. You do something a bit out of whack, you just deal with it. But what you should have done is simmer the broth, which I find that's a bit strange. I don't think it needs to simmer for 20 minutes when you've got a bone broth that's already got herbs and um, seasoning and everything else in it. The only reason you do it is for it to reduce. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to <laughs> see what happens. Or I could restart it. This girl's balls is the new it sure is. Um, Lady Pegasus has Channel 7 news on. See if my balls make the headlines. Yeah, so this may not uh, work. I mean, it doesn't matter, though, because if it simmers even with dairy in it, it is going to eventually 
reduce a bit but i think what it normally you should do is simmer it then you add the dairy and then it can it, apparently it does actually thicken when you add the dairy but in my experience it doesn't thicken much at all because it's just another liquid right but we kind of want it up but i certainly don't want the meatballs going in now because that's kind of just water but anyway we'll give that a go we'll do the um cauliflower in the meantime the the balls are brown they're browned in the oven they are brown already they're baked they're oven baked normally what i would do is i would do the same thing i'd pan fry my meatballs first then i'd make the gravy and i'd use the pan juices in it as well and then i'd re-add the meatballs before serving it but the the balls have just baked in the oven for 20 minutes they're browned yeah i normally would too but i'm just trying this this is keto maybe it's to cut down on the amount of butter um i like trying different things see if they're different see if they're um more tender who knows maybe that's why they're unswedish because they're baked in the oven i look i don't know but i'm happy to try new things but normally when i make meatballs i do exactly the same i cook them in the um, frying pan first then i make whatever gravy or sauce and then i add the balls at the end But so far, you do like to critique on balls. Well, I think balls should be critiqued. Let's start with why are men so fucking proud of their balls and why do they think women should be equally as impressed? You argue with Google too, says Helen Googles with um Helen argues with Google. She's over on Facebook. <laughs> I know, I can't believe can you believe she told me off? Like I didn't ask you. She's such a fucking millennial. She's such a millennial. By the way, you don't have to say hey Google. You can just say stop. Okay, well, I'll just be a rude bitch next time. Sorry that I was raised with manners. Oh, God, and now Google's opened up with me saying that. <laughs> hey, Google, are you a millennial? I'm still pretty new. I'm learning a lot. No kidding. <laughs> She's the best ball breaker I've ever seen. Yeah. But, yeah, the meatballs are brown. I'll bring them back over. They're baked. Oh, hang on. Can I get out of the light? They're baked. They're browned and they've got jizz coming out of them. All right. Well, like I said, diet doctor, they're Swedish. They do things a little bit differently. I've never used garlic powder or onion powder before. So, yeah, bacon meatballs. It's a way forward. Hey, Google. Do you like balls? I tell you if I knew. Say millennial. What kind of answer is that? Hey Google, what is a testicle? This is the definition of testicle. Either of the two oval organs that produce sperm in men and other male mammals, enclosed in the scrotum behind the penis. A bit more info than I was after. Anyone got a question for Google? <laughs> Wraith. Hang on, what's John saying? You part cooking skillet. Yeah, I know, Groover. But like I said, I'm trying this different method. If it's shit, it's shit. But I want to, I'm doing a diet doctor recipe. So they've kindly let me cook some of their shit, but I've got to cook it their way. 
I'm happy to try something new. It might be delicious. They might be dry. Who knows? I can I can eat a meatball now if you want, and I can tell you whether it's um dry or not. They were in the oven for 15 minutes on 190. She's twisted. Has anyone got any questions for her? Since we're talking nuts. All right, I might get the water going for the cauliflower mash. Let's do that. Because a watch gravy never thickens. I do have some arrowroot flour, which is a, or arrowroot powder, which is a keto friendly thickener. And if worse comes to worse, I'm just going to chuck some of that in and try and thicken it up that way. Let's see if I can find it. Where'd I put that shit? I put it there. Broke, not show. She broke the record. It's okay, Tori. You must stick with the protocol. Well, I look like I said, it could be crap. Who knows? We won't know unless we have a try. Um, and it's fun to mix things up a little bit, I think. So I'm just going to do some arrowroot flour. You kind of treat this like corn flour, so you do a little bit of arrowroot and a little bit of water. And mix it together. And apparently it's a thickening agent. The last time I used it, it didn't thicken at all. So let's try it. What's everyone else having for dinner? Hey Google, tell me all about. There's, there's so many different what levels. Kind of information are you looking for? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was just reading it because she's impatient too. Um, hey Google, tell me about Swedish balls. Here's a summary from Wikipedia. A meatball is ground meat rolled into a small ball, sometimes along with other ingredients, such as breadcrumbs, minced onion, eggs, butter, and seasoning. Meatballs are cooked by frying, baking, steaming, or braising in sauce. There are many types of meatballs using different types of meats and spices. Did you hear that, motherfuckers? One of the ways you can cook meatballs, did you hear that? Baking! If Google says it's all right, then it's all right. Fuckers. She, <laughs> she is weird. She's smarmy. But if I ask her if she loves me, she makes me do this ridiculous quiz and then she writes a poem at the end or sings a little song and for some reason it makes me laugh. She does this little quiz and it's got little sound effects. So like there's, if you're on a desert island and you wanted to go to another desert island, would you go in a little plane and they have the sound of the little plane going meow? Or would you go on a surfboard and then it's got like shit like that kind of makes me laugh. I've cooked my dinner and I'm inhaling it now. This is big cook. I was having a McCain... Frozen meal. What what one are you having, Ivor? Yeah, corn flour is good for thickening, but um, in the world of keto, corn is bad. So this is actually thickening on its own, by the way. This little gravy. But I'm also curious to see how the, oh, gnocchi with asparagus and chilli, yum. 
You started after me. Yeah, but you weren't live, Groover. <laughs> you weren't live and chatting and having a camera fall over and Google, Alexa, well not Google, Google being not Alexa, Google being rude to me and there's been a lot going on here. But I want to see if this works because the other type J when I used it, it did absolutely fuck all. So I'm curious. Oh, my God. I think it's working. It's kind of weird, but. Lamb with mashed potatoes, peas and carrots with blended with chemicals. <laughs> I love you, gorgeous girl. <laughs> Sounds really good, except for the chemicals bit. That has thickened. Bloody brilliant. All right, so I'm just going to chuck the mushrooms in as well. And the mushroom jizz. And then meanwhile over here I've chopped up about uh, 400 and, no, about 400 grams of cauliflower. We're making a little cauliflower mash and you want to cook the cauliflower not till it gets mushy like our mothers and grandmothers did but to a point where it's um, mashable so like about six minutes probably we'll check it out a bit later you want it to be a bit more tender because you want to mash it we're going to mash it this gravy is looking divine how good are the handles have a look at my gravy I see I'm in the way Look at that deliciousness. It's good. It's groovy and it's going to have balls in it shortly. Um, and we're going to add the cooked meatballs and let them simmer on low for an additional five to ten minutes. But I might just get on with the cauliflower cauliflower smells yuck i think it's okay yeah cosmos make everything taste good you could have all made also i could matthew but i'm trying to do the bloody recipe to the <laughs> the letter i would have thickened if i'd let it um simmer and i had i fucked it up i added the dairy at the start i've got an amazing amazing gravy now but i'm trying to do, it's, it's a diet doctor recipe i have to follow it that's part of the adventure. There's a lot of things. If I was just cooking something normally, I cook a lot of this stuff very differently. But this isn't my recipe. This is diet doctor. This is the world of keto. And yeah, there's a lot of different. But I wouldn't have bothered with the roof of the um, gravy. I mean, it still would have been arrowroot, which is what I just added now. So. That's the flour or the, uh, you know, the version of a flour that I'd be using. But that's really beautiful. It's thickened delightfully. This beige recipe is frustrating me. Well, <laughs> you don't have to watch it. I actually, I am actually ramping it up too. They didn't suggest Worcestershire sauce, but I am putting Worcestershire sauce in it. There you go. Is that ramped it up for you enough? Lashings of Worcestershire sauce to give it a bit more body. This is a family-friendly recipe, but it's just part of my cooking for diet doctor journey. I can cook every single recipe that's available to the public. I think I may even have some coriander, which might sound a bit weird to some people, but I'm going to chop some of that up and put it on top. But you don't have to um, watch this, Matt. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's frustrating you. But you could um, jump ship if you wanted to. You like your collie crunchy? Me too. Diet Doctor's Swedish. But they do, um, 
they do heaps of different cuisines. Like I've done Indian, Asian, and lots of different Asian. There's lots of really full-on bold Thai dishes. Um, they've got me lots of Mexican. The Tex-Mex seasoning that I made a few weeks ago is the most punchy in your face mexican dish i've ever made it was incredible and i use that seasoning a lot um now we're getting dangerous with the worcestershire sauce we are um but yeah this particular one is a family friendly recipe so i wasn't expecting it to be anything too crazy but let's see if what the flavor's like yep the worcestershire sauce has made all the difference it's great And the other thing, is a lot of stuff like this that I make, I do actually cook for a family and with little kids um, who they've got quite sort of um, broad tastes and they do like a few crazy things, but generally they also like all your sort of classic spaghetti bolognese and things like that. So there's no harm in me trying stuff like this because even if I don't eat it, I mean, this is only, I've only made for four portions, but um, whenever I've got leftovers, it's not leftovers, but they, they won't say no to this sort of stuff. If I drop it down to them tomorrow, they will be happy. I'm just chopping up some coriander to put on top at the end, which is weird because... People are probably going, why are you putting coriander on meatballs? But I like some greenery and I don't have any parsley growing. And my only other herbs are um, rosemary and mint at the moment. Hey, Kanga Blue. Oh, there's sour cream and Philadelphia cream cheese in there. It's got cream. <laughs> It has cream. Don't you worry about that either. I've just turned the heat right down so it just simmers. I think Matt's gone because of the beige recipe, <laughs> which is fine. It's not. I'm not cooking this for um. Like everything I cook, some things I I made something the other day and I ate it later and I was like, oh yeah, oh no, it was nice when it was fresh, but I ate it like the next day and it was not nice at all. So I made a note if I ever cook that one again to only do like a, a serving, one serving. I mean, I'm not good with leftovers and reheated stuff at the best of times. I'm going to give the collie a bit longer. The collie doesn't smell at all. She's here. I love how you call yourself she. I'm sorry that the bland is frustrating you. Drop it around to Ivers. No, it's all right, Dales. You don't have to remember that there's cream in it. We all got a bit waylaid because I put the cream in way too early, but it's ended up being an amazingly good gravy. So, you know, I can't complain. And the Worcestershire sauce has just given it that really nice um, boost. And um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yes, I was going to show you. Where is it? I noticed I moved it the other day. That's not the one. I've got a little, it's not this one. I've got a little bottle of sauce. It might be in my bag still. It's a Mexican burn your tits off hottest crazy sauce i think it might be in my bag at the front door um i carry a little bottle of mexican hardcore chili like it's a i can't remember what they call the even hotter than that they're not the hot jalapenos they're the next level up ones is it sriracha or is it no i don't know and i carry and i put it on everything if i go to a place and they're doing brunches i put it on brunches i put it on everything i eat nearly Love a hot sauce. That's kind of where I like the cauliflower. So before I do the mash, I'm just going to chuck 
the meatballs in the pot and let them all simmer there happily together in <laughs> the beige the beige dish is it better now that they're brown matthew and i know it's bothering you because there's there's ways that you cook that i would as well but i'm open to trying new shit you always dropped your cosmo You generally have an issue with keto recipes. Yeah, and look, I, I'm not surprised. A lot of people do, but I love them. But I, I ramp them up with stuff, like I put Tabasco sauce on things. None of the Asian, Mexican, South American food that I've made on the Diet Doctor website has been bland at all. Like it's been as good as what you'd get in those countries. They've got chefs from all over the world. They're a Swedish website but the recipe contributors are from all over the place and yeah this particular one she's french canadian the one that did this recipe so i don't know if that explains anything So the cauliflower from memory is going to have a heap of creamy goodness in it too. <laughs> I'll just get rid of this board. Mm, there's shit everywhere, guys. Um, what am I adding to the cauliflower from memory? It's more sour cream and... Um, hang on. God, this recipe is so long. Yes, yeah, so we've got more Philadelphia cream cheese going in. Like a big fuck off blob. They say 75 grams. Again, I'm guessing a bit of a guesstimate. A big um, blob of butter. Now, one thing they did did have in the picture, which I didn't think to buy, unfortunately, they had radishes um, to add a bit of colour to the plate. And I've been craving radishes, but I don't think it's radish season. Um, you're pedantic. It's cool. She's just being. You are. Yes, you are. Your pussy is bigger, doll. <laughs> pedantic pedant is like picky he's been whining she's been whining some salt and pepper this is all for the cauliflower mash there you go that's all the stuff that i'm about to mash into it and um Yeah, I've, I've taken it out while the cauliflower still, it's it's soft enough to mash now, but it's still pretty firm, like I didn't want it mushy at all. This is the sort of thing on keto, though, that as much as I love it the night I eat it, I'm not a huge fan the next day, but if it's been like pan fried in butter or something... It's just made the meal even more bland. Matt, you're really going to hate it now because it's just white on white. And like I said, I would have done some beans normally. Fuck it, do I have some beans? This is far too much white going in from Vicky. I've got some beans. Let's just chuck some beans in a pot. Okay. I can have a little chat now while the bean water heats up. You need to join rate my plate. I can't. It's really funny, Amanda. Like, 
I know that web. I know that Facebook group. I used to be on a website that was kind of a rate my. I don't know what it was called. I don't think it was called rate my plate, but it was a similar concept. Um, so many people upload like really bad photos of food, and it makes me not want to eat food. You would have roasted peppers. This is a late dinner. It's six thirty, Lady Pegasus. I know it's beige. That's why I'm doing some, um, I know you're teasing too. That's why I'm doing some greenery. I can't handle beige. You know when um, I was little, my dad cooked this one. I was talking to my sister about it the other night and she doesn't remember this, but my dad used to cook scallops in white sauce and then he'd serve it with um, white bread with butter. And there was no, I think he even used white pepper, but there was absolutely no colour at all. I'm going to cut up some, just cutting the ends off some green beans. Um, and he served up this bowl of scallops, which I didn't really like as a kid anyway. They were too rich. I could like one or two, but that was it. And um, this really thick white sauce without any salt or pepper in it and then white bread with butter. And he made me eat this bowl and I finished it and then threw it all up straight back into the bowl. I've never been good with white bowls of anything. So, yeah, the all-white dinner. So, I know it was a very dad thing. And, look, he did the most amazing flathead. Um, I'll give him credit for that. He used to do incredible flathead. He, was, he, he really could cook abalone beautifully. But for some reason, the scallops in white sauce with the bread and butter, it was just the all white thing and it was just so rich. And I remember just sitting there with tears rolling down my cheeks because I just couldn't. I reckon there would have been at least 14 scallops in the bowl. And it was hurting me to have to eat it. And, um, yeah, and I threw the whole one up. But no, I mean, that's not really late. I probably normally eat at about 6.30, somewhere between 6.30 and 7, Lady Pegasus, but this has been a bit of a an ordeal with the camera falling and all sorts of shit. But, yeah, I'm, I've always, I'm always, I've always eaten dinner well before 8 p.m. Like when I do the intermittent fasting, seriously, 12 till 8 is the window in which I eat. I try to eat. I like eating between six and seven. It depends on when I've been for a walk and all that sort of stuff or what I've had for lunch. If I have a big lunch, I don't have dinners like this. Did your dad do white bait pat? No, he didn't. I wish he had, though. Did yours? We didn't. I didn't actually experience white bait till I lived in Adelaide and um, there was a Greek restaurant that did deep fried white, white bait. It was the first time I'd actually eaten it. I'm going to put this on. It was the first time I think it was in Adelaide I ate white bait. don't know how everyone's over on um, cooking time with the, tom oh, with the tornado. I thought you said tomato. <laughs> hey, Karen. Hey, Nick, over on Facebook. How you doing? The tornado. No one's ever called me that before. I like that. It's a good play on my name, Nick. Well done. So I'm just waiting for these beans. Um, and then I'll just put a little bit of the mashed cauliflower. It's not the same. Like if you were doing meatballs in a gravy on top of mashed potato, it's still a lot of white. A bit of parsley would have been good. And now I know why they served it with a whole lot of red radishes in the photo. Um Face bonk. It's a very beige, but it's like I said, it's family cooking. Maddie, come on. Don't you ever have to cook for little little ones? It smells really good. I might try one of the meatballs. I'm trying to think what I'm making. Oh, well, you probably won't like what I'm making on the weekend either, Matt. I'm doing chicken pot pies and cardamom and cinnamon bliss bomb, uh, fat bombs with 
You probably won't like that one either. Mmm, yum. Not dry at all. They're really good. The flavour in them is amazing. Oregano, garlic, and onion are probably the strongest flavours. Well, and the, and the beef. They're really nice. They're not, um, they're not the most zesty of um, dishes, but they've got a lot of flavour. I'm just going to steam these beans. Yeah, they're not um, like punchy in your face. Like a Vietnamese feast, but they've got lots of flavour. What are you um? What are you cooking today, Maddie? Can Facebook see YouTube comments? No. Unless no. They can't, which is why I try to get people to come over to YouTube. But some people are just happy to stay over in Facebook land, and that's fine. It's just I don't jump over there very often. But it's weird. If I put something in Facebook, like the link to the YouTube channel, it shows up in the chat on StreamYards and on YouTube. But that's it. Um... Can I do a veg o keto? Absolutely, Amanda. Absolutely. In fact, I'd rather do veg o because then, I mean, I think Diet Doctor has got some veg o stuff, but um, if we're doing veg o, I'll do some Yotam Osalangi stuff. Everything he does, not everything, but nearly everything he does is keto friendly. And yeah. And as much as I hate to say it, because the guy's fucking bats shit insane, but Pete Evans put out a book um, last year called Eat Your Greens, and it's one of the most incredible books in my... I've got shitloads. It's cookbooks all over my house. Um, it's one of my absolute favourites, and it's all veggie. He does recommend proteins if people want to add a protein, but every single dish, whether it's salad or vegetable is a meal in its own right and it's incredible like um the stuff that yeah that i've made i don't know if you like celery but he does a ratatouille and, and ratatouille i um fuck let me think of the word you know the salad where everything's really finely chopped up and it's got burgle in it what the fuck is it called i just had a complete blank but he does it with celery and it is so good it is so good and he does a if you like um, Chinese flavours, my favorite, one of my favourite, well, my favourite Chinese dish is Kung Pao chicken, which has got all the whole chilies in it and chilli oil. And he does Kung Pao cauliflower. And one of my vegetarian friends, when she came here and I made it for her, she actually drank the juices out of the bowl. Tabbouli. Yeah, he does a celery tabbouli that is incredible. Like, it's so good. But, yeah, batshit crazy, but his book, Eat Your Greens, is, I'll get it. Swear to God, if you see this anywhere, I got it at Kmart for 24 bucks. It is the most, oh, you want cauliflower? Cool. You want cauliflower? All right, cool, I'll do the Kung Pao cauliflower. Let's see if I can find the picture to show you. Um, but you know when you go to someone's house and they're like, bring a salad, and you just go, I don't want to bring a boring green salad again. Um, you go into his book and it's just like everything you make. He's got Brussels sprout salads that are incredible. I'm trying to find the Kung Pao cauliflower. Hang on. But, yeah, it's... I know the guy's a nut nutter. I know he's into conspiracy theories, but this is the best vegetarian cookbook I've ever had. 
I know that's a bit cold, but seriously, it is so fucking good. Um, and everything in it is delicious. Let me show you the cauliflower. Um, hang on a sec. I just want to take my beans off while they're still crunchy. good to go dinner will be served shortly i just want to show you this recipe though it's just so delicious and then i'll show you the tabbouleh because that's but yeah you know when people say bring a salad and you're like oh, i don't want to just do some um i mean don't get me wrong i love iceberg lettuce but you know it's like i don't want to just do a green salad i want to do something interesting and i take these things to his to barbecue his recipes to barbecues and stuff and people just go nuts it's um Kung Pao cauliflower. It's amazing food. Here you go. Can you see that? With all the chilies and pine nuts and it's amazing. It's amazing. Um... Cauliflower pizza base for keto is amazing. It is good. Yes, it is. Mexi beans on baked potato. Mm, yum. Baked potatoes. I do miss potatoes. Yeah, Amanda, honestly, it's, I don't mind putting money in his pocket. And then I'll show you the tabbouleh, the celery tabbouleh, because it's amazing. Um, he's got two. He does a roasted pumpkin one as well. Celery and dukkha. And he's got recipes for, like, every dressing, dukkha, you know, whatever he uses. Um, and whenever he says activated, like he says at the start, um, ignore me, just use almonds. But that's the celery tabbouleh. Focus. It's like, it, yeah, it's just divine, absolutely divine. So whack that on your list. The roasted sweet potato tabbouleh, roasted pumpkin. That's the other tabbouleh's roasted pumpkin. But there's heaps of sweet potato. Here's Thai roasted pumpkin with satay sauce. But you will cook that and there's your dinner. You don't need to put a protein with it. And he will add at the bottom, he says, if you want protein, you can add grilled chicken, roast pork, or seared salmon. Like he gives you recommendations. The the Kung Pao uh, cauliflower, I actually added eggs to it, hard-boiled eggs. It was divine. See you, Maddie. Oh, yeah, Kung Pao's the best. I love it. Yeah, take your mum. That'd be fun. Who or what got you interested in cooking? If you grew up in Taz, it's meat and three veg. I'm guessing travel and education. Well, interesting your interesting question, Ida. Um, I'll just get me a little stool. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get eat this off cam. So I'm just gonna turn everything off and put the lids on and just wrap up. But that's a good question, Ida. Thank you um for asking so cooking got this poor, poor camera and tripod but hey rustic mockery how you doing have a good night maddie funny you should say that right so i um used to like hanging out with my mum and we would chat while she cooked even when i was really small we had stools originally on each side of the um, oven, like it was a freestanding oven and there'd be a stool with like a little stepladder stool, you know, the ones with the little fold-down ladder bit but they had a cushioned seat. And I used to sit on that with the little stool bit down and my feet on the top stool or the top step of the ladder and just chat to mum and just watch her cooking. And then after a while I started just doing what she was doing and 
I'd do the same with my grandmothers. I'd hang out in the kitchen with them. So from a really small age. But then in terms of um, being introduced to other types of cuisine, some of that is from travelling. Also, as a uni student, I was broke and Asian food in particular was super cheap. Um, I met Matt in Adelaide, but I would often go to places that did different cuisines because they were generally a lot cheaper than, you know, Western food. But also my mum had a Japanese friend and a Greek, Greek female friend and a male. I'm just trying to think if it was Greek or Italian. But we did eat, we did get introduced to a little bit of Greek and Japanese food, not Japanese so much as little kids, but, you know, the you sort of the masakas and the lasagnas and the bolognese, you know, they were fairly standard, I think. But we did get introduced to a few flavours. My grandmothers and mum had travelled. My mum went overseas straight out of school to work in London for a couple of years. So they, there were influences in their cooking as well. And then... I've travelled a lot through Asia and I love Asian food, especially Vietnamese is my favourite, but I love Japanese as well, close second. Um, but I also go for spicy stuff. If, if there's, you know, a menu in a pub even, if there's something spicy, I'll pick that over anything else. Oh, yeah. You had one too, Kanga Blue. Yeah, I'm... So bummed that I didn't save that from my mum and dad's house. Like it was, yeah, I'm bummed. The first one we had, though, that fell apart and it got replaced. The first one was gorgeous because it was a proper 60s, 70s one and it was, um, you know, the really funky sort of retro chrome with the orange vinyl seat. And then the second one that we got was a more like maybe an 80s version and it had a navy blue seat with white piping around the edge. But I wish I'd kept that because I spent a lot of time on those stalls chatting to mum and watching her cook. Um, yeah. Did it with your grandmother too. So did Lady Pegasus. They were the best things. I am still doing keto, Rustic. I'm, well, I'm kind of low carb at the moment. I'm supposed to be going back to pure keto, but maybe I'm, I did a meal plan for this week and I've kind of stuck to it, but for the, I've been having milk. So, yeah, I'm not completely keto again. Yeah, the bottom steps would swing in underneath it and it would be, a, so you could sit on it just as a stool as well, but I always put the little, steps down so I could put my feet on them but yeah I wish I'd kept it because they were handy too for getting up to you know the top shelves in the kitchen not that I mean I can reach everything in my kitchen but um they were handy I know yeah I just that's just my, was my little spot where I used to hang out so I think I was able to cook like roasts and stuff by the time I was 12. I started cooking pretty young scones there's a lot of CWA type cooking going on either a lot a lot but then my grandmother did things like um on Sundays at her place she would put on these roast potatoes in the morning that she parboiled and then rolled them in flour and then just cooked them for hours in you know those electric fry pans that everyone had hers was a square they were square and she'd have them cooking in her lard and you know the lard was all her leftover bits and pieces and that that had its own unique taste so I mean, I've never had a lard pot, but both of my grandmothers did. But grandma would cook these baked potatoes and I think my dad broke a tooth on one of them and maybe one of my cousins. It was almost like a rite of passage. You hadn't really lived till you broke a tooth on one of grandma's spuds, but they were so good. They were so they were the best crunchy potatoes ever, ever. Milk is hard. It's in a lot of food. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, in keto, it's all about cream. And, you know, you can go for cream. But, yeah, I, I'm still having milk. And I shouldn't. Milk's what makes me fat more than anything else. It's the milk. I know that dairy is the worst thing for me. Not the, for some reason, when I was just doing cream and cream cheese and cheeses, I was losing weight. But as soon as milk came back in, um. That's so cute that we all had those stools. I wish I'd 
I wish that I had um, kept that stall. Well, no. The blue one was nice, but it wasn't the, the runner. The one I loved was the one with the really cool, bendy chrome. I wonder if you can still buy them. Dish the meal up and show us before you go. Yeah, I can't remember how. I mean, I'm, in terms of doing the roast, I meant like unsupervised. I think I wrote when I was around 12 was when I cooked without anyone having to watch me. I was well and truly on top. I mean, I was baking scones and cookies and cakes with mum and grandma supervising when I was little too, but I think it was maybe um, milk making me fat. Yeah, it does. Or are you saying it's everything else as well? whatever ebay thank you for asking that question live i loved that one ebay all right i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna serve up my dinner i'll show you the bowl before i go and um ebay's stalls so many different types of stalls now i'm gonna call it a kitchen stall. No, they're all funky ones. I want the retro. I'm going to type in retro. I'd have to go on a bit of a mission. There's nowhere for me to store it, though. I've got retro bar stools with the chrome, but no, I want the one with the little ladder. Oh, God, there's one, but that's that's even older than... That's even before the one we had. They're even cooler. <gasps> These are groovy. It's not, this isn't quite what the one we had looked like, but I check it out. Hang on. Screen share. I'm so glad you asked that question. We've just gone down the best little retro road. Um, okay. So, yeah, ours wasn't as old as this one, but check how cool it is. It's got wooden, the steps on the ladder bit are wooden. Can you see that? Is it zoomed in? Oh, probably zoomed in as much as it can, but yeah, it's got wooden steps. Ours wasn't that cool. I mean, ours was cool, but it wasn't that retro-y. Um, and yeah, the oh that one too. That I know people that had ones like that. That's kind of what ours was like, but it had an orange vinyl cushion. Um that little pink one. Ours didn't have a back on it though. It was just the stool bit, the seat bit. Oh, look at this wicked one. How cute. I just, it's the memories. Oh my God. I love that. Uh, Formica, my favorite thing in the world. Look at that. Oh my God. I love it. I've got a Formica table that I love. These ones are posh. There. That's what ours was like. That's exactly what ours was like, but orange. That one right there. I don't know if it's in the shot or not. That's what ours was like, but I mean, that may even be orange. I don't know. Your auntie's one didn't have a back. Um, kitchen scene, just watching. <laughs> I would have eat. They def they definitely well. There's some of those ones were even older than um, the one we had. But yeah, that's the one that ours was like. I don't remember the steps being matching the vinyl cushion the one i was told not to not pull over to the oven and look but you tried um we had one of those tables it was green i've got a full mic my desk it's not actually a desk but my i should show it to you guys one day um my little I've got like a little study nook and I've set it up like a little study and 
it's got a little formica covered table it's a wooden table with a formica top on it but um it was the table that my brother sister and i used to sit around for at breakfast and it's teeny tiny and it's the cutest little thing and i'm so glad i've got that but yeah i wish i had the stool lady pegasus so yours was like that kind of i mean it wasn't that one's a bit groovier I don't remember the steps being so fancy. God, we've opened up a whole new world of things. See, I'm not a fan of the yellow formica, but that one up there with the chrome legs and everything, oh, I love it. There's one of those. I mean, it's probably not the legs aren't the same. They're probably, probably straight legs. But there's one of those in the shed over the road from my house, and it's in mint condition. And I'd love to steal it. <laughs> I'd love to get it. I can't, though. Whoever owns it has looked after it. That's, that's just brought back the best memories, hey? All the stools. This is what the, those are, that's what the chairs around the full market table in the shed are like. The steps were black rubber. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon I've got a feeling they were ours were either black rubber or white rubber with an orange vinyl cushion and white piping around the edges of the cushion. But it did get replaced, so it it, it carked it probably from me as I got older and fatter or whatever. Oh, look at that funky little table. A little bar table. And then these stools, that's what we had in Vietnam. They're actually more Japanese style, but in Vietnam, that's what we had around our table. I love a stool. I'm sitting on a, a great stool at the moment too. Look at this with the booth. Check out those bar stools. That's like... I mean, I, I don't have the space to turn my house into a diner, but how groovy. There's another one, a fancy one with a back on it. They were the, for the posh people. All right, I think it's time to finish this live and eat some meatballs. Not the best dish I've had oh there's a wooden one that's kind of cute that's groovy too you just can't buy things like this anymore like I mean you can buy the original stuff but they just don't make things like that now modern ones that uh, well they may maybe they do I mean we the one we the replacement one we had that one's cute all right you're probably a bit over stools I can't even see chat going to go over to Facebook and say goodbye to everyone who's still on Facebook. There's one person that's probably me. Um, where's the stream out gone? Memories are good. Hold on to them. There are. There's more to cooking than meets the eye, folks. Smells and stuff brings back memories. So thanks for sharing, guys. Yeah, it was lovely, wasn't it? Your auntie had the two-tone chairs in olive and white. Oh, my God. Your auntie was cool. All right, my dinner's getting cold, so hang on. I forgot. Where are we? There we go. Stop screen sharing. <gasps> what a walk down memory lane we've just had. So I'm going to serve up my dinner, which is probably lukewarm now. Uh, I'll do it. Jules by the sea wanted to see the... Here's the end result photo, so... Oh, shot. Let me just get some shit out of the way. So here's the cauliflower mash. So it's kind of chunky. I've, I've made it chunky. I haven't mashed it to the point that it's just a big slop. It's got a, it's got a bit of hold to it still, which is nice.
some meatballs and some of the mushroom gravy. Mm -hmm. Plating up. I'm plating up, motherfuckers. Some green beans. which I just steamed and put some butter on top, a little bit of butter, and then some cracked pepper and a little bit of salt. And where's it gone? Pretend it's parsley. Here you go, motherfuckers. I'll just make that highlighted comment off. How do I show it to me? There you go. There's dinner. Meatballs in mushroom gravy with cauliflower mash and green beans. Bon appetit. <laughs> bon appetit. Where's Will the Rocker? I've got to send him a message. I haven't seen him around. I haven't spoken to him for ages. So I want to check, check, track down Will the Rocker as well. Thanks, Jules. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, Ivor. <laughs> Do something on yours if you want. I'm going to eat my dinner. Um, that looks yummo. That looks good. It does look good. Thank you. Um, I just typed in retro kitchen stools with ladders or steps or something. And they came. They all came up. Um, there's no pig. It's just cow. But I, I know that would still upset you. Well, not upset you, but it's still gross. But it's not pig. I don't do that. I don't dig the pig. I am leaving. <laughs> Mel, Mel, hello. Just a time. Dinner's ready. Bon appetit. So until next time, is anyone going to go live this evening? I'll come and hang. I'm meant to be studying, but I'll come and hang. Mm. Something's clicking. Um. Okay, the coriander's giving it a bit of a quick kooky twist, but it's actually really tasty. Um, fuck my life. That's what FML means, isn't it, Melmel? <laughs> Oh, there you go. Lady Pegasus has put a link in for the stool. Um, it was really lovely chatting about how we all sat on kitchen stools and watched people cook and chatted to them when we were children. That was lovely. Mel Mel's made the meatballs before they're good. These are really nice. So I'm going to get offline so I can eat these and not gross people out. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Um, when am I live again? I think on soon i can't tell it doesn't show me the other shows i've got scheduled let me see if that shows up it doesn't show up on my um channel which kind of annoys me the ones that i've got where you need to you know set a reminder for some reason they don't show up on my channel but i'm going live again not tomorrow because biscuit and i are going to the vet so we're going to be having a quiet time tomorrow night and um i'm just going to play nurse and look after her because she's got follow-up tests to see if she's getting better or if there's any improvement or whether she's going to be on all of these different drugs for the rest of her life so tomorrow is going to be quiet time with b and then um i'm going live on saturday and sunday on saturday i'm cooking chicken pot pies and i'm making cardamom and cinnamon fat bombs I've got coriander in my teeth, I think. That's a bad look. And um, I have to talk like this till I get rid of it. Um, and then Sunday I'm doing The Wreck of the Ruby Princess, massive show on that. For those of you that are following that, I've got heaps of stuff to talk about. And somewhere on the weekend I'm also going to do um, When YouTube Enters Your Life. So keep an eye out for that one too. I'd love people to jump up on panel and talk about it because I think we all need to just have a big group hug. Not because we're not coping, but we need a laugh. 
And we need to, I, mean, I talk about it when I'm on the beach, but I want other people to talk about it with me. So that's what's planned. Groovers, um, thanks for hanging out. Take care, everyone. If anyone goes live, just flick me a message. Um, go watch my Mod Boss Inc. I'll put that on while I clean up the kitchen. And yeah, send positive vibes out for poor little B. Um, she's it's just a follow up. She's definitely a lot better, but unfortunately, she gets so anxious at the VET that they have to actually put her under to do all the tests and everything. So send out positive vibes for Fluffy. Um, love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. See you all soon. Bye. I'm not smiling with my mouth open because I think I've got coriander in my teeth. I'm out here.